Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, iSchool Connect. Like every week, we are back with some really interesting content. This channel is what studying abroad dreams are made of. Do subscribe and hit the bell icon. And this week, we are talking about PGDM and master's courses in Canada. We know a lot of you have queries around these courses and a lot of you want to pursue your higher education in Canada. So with me to discuss uh, some, re some relevant points around these two courses, around this uh, you know, country, this destination, I have our expert counselor from iSchool Connect with us. Hi, Kunjal. Uh, hi, Malvika. Thank you for having me uh, and doing this uh, session so very nice. I can share my knowledge with everyone. Amazing, amazing. So uh, just uh, just for all of you to know, uh, I wanted to let you guys know that Kunjal is a highly experienced uh, you know, counselor and she has been helping students in the space of overseas education for a very long time, since over four years now. And she has sent hundreds of students to study abroad uh, under her ex expert mentorship. And her goal is to connect students with relevant universities, institutions, and courses, right? As well as it's important for her, you know, to help the students and handhold them in a way that global education is accessible to each of you, right? And uh, Kunjal's expertise lie in Canadian uh, overseas education, which uh, I know a lot of you are keen to learn about. And she is thorough with every minute detail when it comes to the application process of programs like bachelor's, master's, uh, MBA, right, and whatnot, right? She's successfully sent students to some of the top destinations across Canada. Um, you name it, right? So McGill, York University, University of Toronto, University of Alberta, Centennial, Hummer College, Ryerson, Georgian College, the list really goes on. And uh, it's such a nice uh, thing to have you here, Kunjul, and have you answer all these queries for the students. Thank you so much, Malvika, for that lovely introduction and, uh, you know, appreciating my work and putting it out. So thank you so much. Yes, of course, uh, I just want to share my experience with everyone wherein it will really help them to, as I mentioned before, also to choose their paths accordingly. Wonderful. So without wasting any time, let's just head straight into the first question uh, that we've received from students. And that is, what is the difference between a PGDM versus a master's degree? So I'll first start with uh, what is like what is PG Diploma basically, the PGDM program, which is there in Canada. So PG Diploma, you know, very widely in their quality. They require a previous degree, which would be from a community college uh, or a college diploma in a relevant area. And usually around, you know, these course durations are approximately on 8 to 18 months in length. Okay. So majorly they focus on, you know, intense skill development in the areas that are either familiar uh, into which are relevant to their background. Okay, so that is one of the things. Other than this, uh, other than this, you know, there are something which is called as co-op. So PG diploma comes come along with a co-op. Now co-op is nothing but a short internship which is incorporated within the program. And PGDM focuses more on skill development. Now talking about master's degree, okay. So it requires like 16 years of uh, academic uh, education, basically an education background, okay, uh, which has to be absolutely relevant, majority of the times relevant to the program that they intend to pursue further into a master's degree program. And uh, talking about it, master's is going to be approximately around two to two and a half years duration program. Okay. Now uh, it involves of, you know, courses, seminars, presentations, pieces based and uh, major papers are included. And this majorly focuses on knowledge development of the student. So this is a major difference uh, when it comes to PG diploma and a master's degree program. That was that was really crisp and that was very clear for us to understand, uh, right Kunjal? I also had uh, another really you know important question to ask and that is, which program is more you know, popular in Canada? Is, is there a preference between PGDM or master's? 
Okay. So to answer this, uh, Malvika, like in Canada, both the programs are equally popular, okay? Uh, be it PGDM or be it masters. But yes, uh, when it comes to masters, it is most preferable program because, because it is going to give a degree altogether to a student, which is going to be a master's degree. So like how bachelor's degree is really an important degree for a, a candidate uh, when it comes to academics. Likewise, even master's is going to be a, one of the degrees which is really important for a candidate. So it gives a degree altogether. So yes, uh, master's is something which is more preferable as compared to. But yes, these uh, both the programs are equally popular in Canada. Absolutely. I completely agree, right? Uh, now, in terms of the PGDM course, Right. What would you say is the requirement for someone to pursue this? A PG diploma program, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning also. So generally, a three years undergraduate degree is required or else a three years, uh, you know, a community diploma, which is required, which has to be uh, from a recognized college or from a recognized university that the student is pursuing from. Okay. Other than this, uh, when it comes to English proficiency, the student needs to score an IELTS band of you know 6.5 overall and no band less than 6 in each. And other than that, the academic scores, yes, of course, this is very important point that the student needs to be uh, keeping in mind before you know applying for Canada. That is to apply for a PG diploma because the student needs to score at least between 55 to 70 percent. That's the academic score that the student needs to have to get into a PG diploma course. Got it. And similarly, what would you say would be the requirements for a master's course? So coming to a master's degree course, as I mentioned, uh, of course, uh, it requires a 16 years of education. That means it needs a four years of bachelor's degree. Okay. Uh, and it has to be a full-time degree. Okay. It cannot be a distance education also. Same goes with PG diploma as well. I want to add uh, it over here. That even PG diploma requires a full-time degree. It cannot be a distance education. Canada, you know, it is very difficult if you hold a distance education and applying with it uh, to be it a PG diploma course or be it uh, a master's degree course, they generally don't accept uh, those, uh, those academic profiles. So it's very important that the student is doing is pursuing the bachelor's, which is full-time degree and holds a four years of uh, bachelor's education, uh, the undergraduate education. Other than that, in terms of percentage, academic percentage, it has to be, you know, minimum GPA of 3.0 in bachelor's, preferably a relevant background. And uh, when it comes to IELTS score, it has to be like 6.5 overall and no band less than 6. This is a minimum requirement. But there are a few programs and there are a few universities which demand an overall band of 7 as well with no band less than 6.5 in each. And there are some institutions who may ask to submit a GRE score, which should be a minimum 300. So then that is one of the requirements. Now, this is, you know, the first from absolutely from program to program and university to university. Also, I would like to add something over here. So, uh, you know, Canada some also has masters into, you know, three different categories uh, called as masters in uh, post to a course-based program, master's in project-based program, and then to apply for any thesis-based program, okay? So there is generally a supervisor approval which is required, which is, you know, this, uh, before initiating the process, the application process, so prior to that, like two to three months prior, the student needs to have the approval from the supervisor of that particular university and for that particular program. Then the student can apply for a master's in thesis-based program. So just, uh, you know, this is an addition thing that uh, many of the students are not aware about. So I would just want to put a light on this. Thank you. Okay, quick question, right? Uh, I'm not sure if all students know what a supervisor is. Uh, if you can just briefly explain who a super supervisor is in this context. Okay, so supervisor is no one, but, uh, you know, a faculty or the head of that department. For an example, if a student is applying for a master's in computer science program, Okay, and it's a thesis based program. So thesis is nothing but a lot of research work that the student has to do a research based uh, master's course basically. So eventually a student can apply for a PhD course as well. Okay, so uh, there has to be an approval to the courses that you have studied 
okay and the credit points that you have scored so eventually uh, if, if uh, that since you are applying for that program okay whether you are eligible or not this is decided by that particular supervisor that means the head of that particular department and if he approves that he is ready to supervise you and he is ready he considers your profile then only you can further go and apply for a thesis based masters program so that is what a supervisor is got it got it i think that gives a lot yes. of clarity right now yes. uh, speaking of confusion and clarity uh, most yes. students when they are planning to pursue higher education in canada yes the first question is what is a college uh, what is you know a university how are they different in canada if you can just explain that so yes of course uh, you know uh, generally people have this uh, thing like what are colleges what are universities you are in mbi it is like there is a college which is affiliated with the university that's the whole description about you know college and university that we have but yes it is absolutely different when it comes to canada now canada generally colleges are generally uh, the, the programs that are offered okay uh, that are applied towards a career okay but when it comes to universities they focus more on academics and professional programs so that's the whole difference between college and a university got it fantastic i think that clears it uh, for a lot of us um what is the average cost of pursuing a pgdm uh, in canada okay so the approximately cost in terms of inr it would be approximately 7 lakhs to 15 lakhs per year so that's a cost for a pgu diploma program and talking about a masters degree program it will cost roughly around 15 to 20 lakhs per year now this absolutely differs from college to college and university to university that is in there's a bracket which is given for the cost of it absolutely uh, it really depends on the university the course right uh, the admission absolutely fee, multiple factors uh, come into play now absolutely uh, right now another really crucial uh, aspect of you know studying abroad of, of course academics is first but a close second is you know the job prospects how do they vary uh, for the two courses if at all they do okay now talking about pgdm okay so pgdm usually being a short term skill development program okay offers international students an opportunity to develop uh, industry specific skills uh, gain go- uh, global exposure opt for uh, co-op programs okay so this is what uh, it comes to pgdm now when it comes to a masters degree program it gives the students a chance to develop a career growth opportunity across industries okay so hence uh, you know student completing a pgdm program will have fewer op- opportunities as compared to the student with a masters degree program okay also you know in terms of a designation or a pay scale of course it differs when it comes to pg diploma a diploma and a masters degree course so yes of course it differs when it comes to job prospect as well but uh, you know uh, jobs are equally available for pg diploma as well as for masters degree program it's not that you know there is going to be crunch of job when it comes to pg diploma they won't have much opportunity the opportunities are equal it is just a uh, that uh, you know it differs from when I, as i mentioned designation and pay scale yes of course it differs from industry to industry absolutely and uh, what are some of the top colleges and universities in canada that students can focus on okay uh, now naming about uh, you know few of the top uh, universities in canada are university of toronto uh, university of british columbia mcmaster university or university of alberta mcgill university uh university of montreal queens university so these are few of the top universities which are there in canada uh talking about colleges we have like a uh, humber college we have seneca we have centennial we have uh, you know selkirk college we have vancouver community college uh and yeah these are few of the colleges that we have in canada and these are the good colleges that absolutely uh, completely agree in fact uh, what i would like to add over here is we're going to add a link to all these you know to the top canadian colleges on the i school connect website they are all clearly listed uh, you know the different specifications about each of these colleges uh, and universities are clearly listed so if any of you are wanting to do a deep dive right and you want an overview of uh, each of these universities or colleges we leave a link in the description go ahead and explore it on i school connect.com 
and not just for Canada, right? You can explore institutions from US, from Europe, from UK, from Australia, you name it, and all the destinations, top institutions are clearly listed. You can filter them out, um, basis budget, basis course, um, basis multiple other factors, right? Which, which you feel are important to you. Right, now that leads me to the last question that I have for you today, Kunjal. And that is, what yes. would be your tip from a counselor's perspective, uh, you know, for all the students who are planning to apply to study in Canada? Yes, I definitely want to put a light on this thing, you know, so students are aware that, you know, uh, what has to be done if they are intending to study in Canada. So what are, uh, what is the timeline that has, has to be involved into it? Okay, what are the preparations that they have to be ready with? Now, giving a tip on is the first thing is you have to start your process at least 15 months prior. Okay, the major reason behind this is, you know, uh, it is to shortlist an appropriate program for yourself, do a proper research on that, check which all universities or colleges are available as for your profile, uh, which province or uh, it is situated in, is that what you're looking for? Okay, uh, the course detail, the cost for it, uh, the test prep, the documentation needs to be ready. So yes, this is what uh, a student needs to be, you know, focused on or uh, have need to take care about. And of course, uh, take an assistance from an expert and uh, get your queries resolved because expert will be able to guide you with the entire process. Uh, what are the steps that you need to take further? So it makes your entire uh, process of your uh, study overseas uh, very easy. So, yeah, that's it. This is the only thing that I would want to discuss and tell about. So, essentially, do your research, start well ahead in time, um, and be clear about what you want to apply for and get started with the process, right? Preferably with, with a good expert who can guide you through the whole journey without any hiccups. This uh, brings us towards the end of uh, this quick chat. Thank you so much, Kunjal, for, for taking our time from your super busy schedule. We know it's uh, admission season and all of you are really busy, all the counselors at iSchool Connect, but thank you so much. And um, for, all the, uh, for all the students that are watching this, for all the aspirants that are watching this, know that uh, we'd be happy to help you with any queries that you might have. Leave your questions in the comment section and we'll make sure we answer them for you. I will also leave a link uh, to book a meeting with our counselors, our team, and uh, you will be able to connect with them and have your queries answered there as well, right? Until next time, this is Malvika signing off on behalf of iSchool Connect, along with Kunjal, of course. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you found value in it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are seriously thinking of, of you know, studying abroad. Right. Until next time, please take care. Bye-bye.